I think your site got filled in while you were sleeping. It it did. Yeah, which is uh, you know, should give great. you some tarp so you can cover it. Now, ar do all archaeologists <laughs> do jump like that. I want to know. <laughs> Like that, that yeah, high. just like that. Especially with torches in their hands. Fully, yeah, in fully <laughs> stiff body. Yes, it's yeah. called multitasking. It's actually really important. <laughs> do you learn this in grad school? Like, when, at what point in grad school do you learn how to dig with the the torch in the hand? Welcome, everyone, to Archaeology Arcade. I'm Mike with the Florida Public Archaeology Network. I'm out of our coordinating center in Pensacola. Uh, I am joined, as always, by my colleague, Tristan, who's in our FPAN office out of Tallahassee. And for today's special archaeology guest, uh, we have a good friend of FPAN, Janine Johnston, who currently works at uh, Jamestown Rediscovery in Virginia. Janine, Tristan, thanks for being on. Uh, how are you two doing? Great. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, sorry, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate you being on. And today we're playing this game called Archaeology X. And so uh, this game, this is actually an indie game. Uh, it's, it bills itself as an adventure slash simulation game. So I guess it's supposed to be a simulator. And then uh, this is the description. It says, Archaeology X is an open-world archaeology exploration game where you dig for treasures. Use your notebook and research to discover ancient items hidden for thousands of years. Also, explore long-lost caves or tombs. Ooh, that sounds kind of cool. Finding relics, treasures will be challenging, just like with real archaeology. Carefully study and decipher location clues from the research in your notebook to estimate, dig, sites and so i think uh, it's going to be interesting to make a big claim that it's just like real archaeology uh, i guess we're going to find out if that's true or not and so um this game when you start it out you can pick uh, uh either a male or female character and as you can see let me come out of my tent site i picked a female uh, and that's because most archaeologists i know are actually female so i thought that made a little bit more sense and then you can also choose between working in central america or egypt and I chose uh, I chose Egypt. I don't know why I just did. And so, um, yeah, I think what we'll do is kind of dig into this game a little bit. But before we do that, uh, Janine, can you tell us um, what your current job is and what your background is in terms of you know, you know work in archaeology? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so currently, I am the ooh, what's my title? Collections and curation assistant at Jamestown. Um, so I work with the artifacts once they come into the lab um, in um, conjunction with the other curators and the conservation staff. Um, so we have a collection of over 3 million artifacts. Uh, a lot of them are from early James Fort period, but some of them are from later or earlier occupations as well. Um, my previous experience in archaeology actually began at Montpelier in Virginia. I did my first field school there way back in the day. Um, well, I guess it wasn't that long ago, but uh, and that kind of <laughs> interested me in public archaeology in general because they have a very publicly focused program. Um, so when I was looking at grad schools, I looked at the University of West Florida because of their association with you guys at FPAN and the assistantship available. And that's where I ended up going for my master's and was fortunate enough to receive the FPAN assistantship, got to work with you guys for a long time, and that just uh, increased my desire to continue working in, in public archaeology. So to our um, benefit, I believe. Yeah, definitely. And Jamestown is such a cool place. If, if yeah. uh, For those of people listening, and also I forgot to mention, if you're joining us on Twitch right now, uh, live, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to use the stream chat feature, and we will try to uh, answer any questions or, you know, say any comments. Oh, I just got bit by a scorpion, and here's a snake. So here's the first. So, so, so as, you, as you can see, my health is at the top left. Oh, it's chasing me. I'm going to run away from this. My health is uh, at 61% now. I guess we have food and water that we have to also be concerned about. And so uh, so I guess there's two big questions here on whether this is accurate or not. Number one, um, is it, do, have you, either of you ever had to deal with snakes in the field before? And then also, uh, what's your favorite snack to bring in the field? 
Um, the very first time I visited my, what would be my thesis site, uh, we crossed paths with an Eastern diamondback rat rattlesnake. And instead of like walking away from it, the park rangers and Bill, our advisor, just stood around looking at it, <laughs> um, which was a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> A little disconcerting to me um, <laughs> but yeah so snakes are definitely i've never encountered scorpions but um i'm not sure if tristan has um, yeah i've i've encountered some snakes but i have also encountered scorpions and i have actually seen them chase people a bit so <laughs> that really? uh okay, that scorpion so chasing you seems to have a little yeah. merit yeah i got bit me and so um how about how about doing archaeology on horseback have either of you ever done oh, that? No, but I've always wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be so cool. Or a camel. I wonder if we can get on the camel. Let me see if we can do this. Dismount. Okay. That's good dismounting animation. Um, a also, scorpion bit me again. <laughs> You're gonna die God, by a scorpion. Also, I get just bit again. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna actually die. It's still uh, no, chasing you. Get away uh, from me, stupid scorpion. The Twitch scorpion. channel they can't see like the health and food. Oh, you can't. Oh, okay, I'm gonna of... go. Yeah. Time to wake up. Oh, okay. All I gotta do is go back to sleep. I went in my tent, went to sleep, and now we're fine again. So yeah. Has just it, like in just like in real life. Has it changed the time of day at all? It still looks kind Yeah, of... it looks kind of dark out. And you know, so I think now is the best time to go out and look for sites, right? In the right. dark. You can Yes. Actually, as we talked with uh Mike Prouty a couple episodes ago, different light levels actually can be helpful in very specific situations. But not usually when you're like doing a surface survey looking for artifacts and things. Okay, so um, I I've just brought the map, and so it, it one of the things that it says in this game is that uh, <laughs> if you want to find sites, you need to look up your notebook. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my notebook up, and we'll check out what it says. Here's the notebook. This is interesting. Uh, it's August 30th. I'll just go ahead and read this first passage. I've decided to start making notes about my research, not to forget anything, I'm sure this will be useful someday. Yeah, because that's why you take notes, right? So you don't forget anything. Right. Is that, how's, that, <laughs> how's this compared? Because uh, can you guys talk a little bit about uh, taking notes in archaeology and how this kind of measures up to uh, what what you all are used to? Go ahead, Janine. Uh, yeah, I can, I can go. Uh, yeah, so taking notes in archaeology is very important, as are some of these sketches that they've done. Um, I don't usually put like little smiley faces in my notes. Uh, <laughs> although I guess if it's more informal, maybe I would. Um, I don't think and, it's that uncommon though, either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, the map, that's great. Um, I really like the drawings. Um, I think there were some code things in one mm -hmm. of the first few pages. Obviously, I don't usually have to do that, but this is this looks pretty detailed. Um, so I'm I'm impressed with the notebook at this point, just from a, a basic look at it. Yeah, yeah, I was I was impressed too when I first saw it. Definitely, mm -hmm. handwriting is more legible, but it has a kind of looks like the paper has been wet almost at some point, which as definitely happens to most field work notebooks at some time and. Yeah, it is, there's like, some good detail here, like scratching out misspelled word and yeah. Yeah, and see here it says uh, December 10th. Bought some better equipment. Getting into this now. <laughs> Trow and brush make excellent tools for closer, more delicate digs. Who knows how fragile those long lost items will be? So we so can that's, assume that's kind of accurate. That this person is not a trained archaeologist. Then. <laughs> I don't. Think, I don't I really don't think so. Because <laughs> also with like the first it. first paragraph, it kind of implies that they've been doing research without taking notes. They're like then you're not doing research, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Some stratigraphy. Yes. Right here. Look at this. Different layers of soil and rock. It will be important to understand these before approaching any dig site. So in this game. Um, you can dig in certain areas. It, it will say like, oh, it's too rocky. You can't dig here. Uh, and then it also says, I think it mentions this in one of the notebooks. It kind of gives a little bit of advice on how you should dig. Yeah, here we go. Reminder for digging techniques. Start in one area, dig deep, <laughs> top to bottom, and as opposed to bottom to top. <laughs> then try to work outwards in circles or patterns with 
aim of covering as much surface area as possible. Might be faster if there are many helping, but I need to find ways to make it faster to cover ground as I'm planning to stay uh, on my own. Take all the glory. Oh, and save money. And so these are the patterns that it um, suggests. We got circle pattern. It almost looks like the F pan circle. Like what do you just do? All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. Thing. And then these other random can. So how does how does this measure up with uh, how you, how you would dig in real situations with archaeology? Um, I've never dug in circle patterns before, but the the other ones are, are pretty accurate. You know, with shovel test surveys, you're trying to to cover a lot of ground um, in kind of uh, set increments. Um, and then some people do like a, a grid pattern when they're excavating in, in larger units as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is very dark now. Yeah, <laughs> it is very dark. And, yeah. And there are test <laughs> test units. So you'll sink one just to see, you know, is there anything here? I guess the closest thing, the circle pattern I've ever done is there's been some historic sites occasionally, like if we're doing a basement, we might quarter the basement instead of trying to do a formal one meter mm -hmm. square uh, in those situations, but yeah, not, I don't, I don't think anyone does circle either. Yeah. Um, real quick. I want to say hi to rhinestone five and thanks for subscribing or following us. We've got a new follower. All right. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's another one. And, and then we'll, I'll, I'll look at maybe trying to find a, a site and see how the digging actually mechanics is. Cause it's supposed to be very accurate what the developer claims it says due to extreme heat which i am not used to digging time is limited it's detrimental to my health which out here is vital to be concerned about my health goes slash gets worse noticeably faster depending on what time of day it is okay and how much effort i am making so we'll try to dig at night or at different time of day Okay, so maybe we should start digging at night then. Oh, I can't. <laughs> can you see well, it? Oh, wait, wait, watch this, guys. Watch this. Are we ready? Boom! Wow, a torch. <laughs> a torch. A legit torch. A torch. Oh, let's go dig at night then, because how how often have you two uh, dug at night? Never. How common? How common is that? Not a single time. No. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I know you. Is that? Oh, is it a tumbleweed? tumbleweed it was a tumbleweed, yeah. I, I could see it potentially. Actually, I have heard stories of it happening, but it's always a situation like in cultural resource management where you're on a set deadline, you have to get done, or otherwise the site's getting bulldozed tomorrow. And in mm, that case, yeah. they'll bring in, at, at worst, it's like if they don't plan for that, they'll bring in like vehicles and turn on headlights. But uh, oh, wow. more accurate, a better thing to do, like bringing floodlights and stuff. But right. uh, that's but not, very rare. Not a torch. Though. Not never a torch. No, you wouldn't want the ash to contaminate your site. Oh, no. some um, coconuts. Yeah. Yeah, I know some of our uh, friends and colleagues over at the institute have done a lot of monitoring of those Gulf Power projects at night because that's mm. when they've been working. But. Um, yeah, I, I personally have not done it. Okay, look, we, we found something. This is an abandoned tent. So it says someone else <laughs> someone else has been here. That's what this means. The fire is I wonder, still hot. I wonder if there are competing looters yeah. that we have to compete with. Competing let's, looters. Let's, I think that's a good phrasing there because yeah. I don't think this is real archaeology. I just oh. stole their medical box. <laughs> <laughs> Try to try to compete with us without your medical box. Yeah, you start throwing scorpions at them. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I can't really. It's very difficult to see anything, and I, uh, I think this is too back. rocky. <laughs> no, probably, <laughs> probably not. But you I'm gonna keep walking sleep, this way. Yeah. yeah. You're also. Well, the, are you yeah. gonna be able to find your horse again? No. <laughs> but the good the good news is I do have a jeep. So, if you worst find case. It. If I can find it, I think. Oh, I found a site. Here we go. This right. is something. This is something. Not yeah. sure what. So the other thing you can do in this game is, I guess you can mark sites. So let me try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put down a marker, and I'm going to mark so I remember where the site's at. 
Although this kind of market doesn't work very well, it's does not it? Showing it very well. Yeah. No. Okay, well, we got some type of structure here. Starting to pop up with some yellow lines. Yeah, yeah kind of. I think sometimes it's clipping through the terrain a bit. Yeah. yeah. Does it just... um, show up on your map when you're done? That's a good question. I don't know. Oh, no, it looks like it might. It might actually, yeah. Maybe you should have marked okay. your, your camp so you could find it again. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> I should have done a lot of things, like not come out here at nighttime. Okay, and so alone. the other thing you should, alone, all but yeah, I like that that too, that you're just working by yourself. And let's yeah. see here. We got a he's got a scarf, so that's good. Canteen bottle, uh shovel, and a backpack. Or carrying <laughs> all the stuff on your back. That's pretty Yeah. Rare. Okay, and she's digging one handed. <laughs> Well, <laughs> here's so here's a very accurate excavating, and yes. apparently in this game, if the wind kicks up, it'll like uh, cover your site back up again. So you have to work fast. And so this said, kind of work around in a circle. So let's go with this technique first. Okay. But you're supposed I to mean, dig down first. Pretty oh, dig. impressive um, <laughs> that she can dig one handed like that. Right, <laughs> with her elbow going bending the wrong way. That's that's alarming. <laughs> she comes from a long line of uh, pot hunters. <laughs> Rachel says she can start digging like that, so I'm glad we've included someone's um, habits. Oh, let's try without the light. There we go. Yeah, too hard. I don't think it makes a difference. All right, so it said, you know, try to dig deep and then in kind of a circular pattern. So mm -hmm. let's try that. Circles. What do you all, what do you, so this is how you dig in real archaeology, right? You just kind of start digging around, <laughs> digging around. Just randomly. Digging all, all, all. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not random. I found a, found something. <laughs> yeah, uh, you no. Know. Go ahead, Janine. No, uh, yeah, so not, not usually. Um, generally, we set up units, archaeological units, um, for a more structured uh, dig. And also, um, even within a, one unit, we don't necessarily just dig big holes. We are trying to capture the stratigraphy and location of the artifacts within within a unit. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never seen digging quite like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing to note too is if you you go back, you'll see that the how high the dirt is above your head. Mm -hmm. and I will point out that is extremely dangerous because that dirt can collapse on you and uh, that's it especially if you're all alone excavating like you shouldn't be um, yeah. actually Netflix just released a, a movie called The Dig where that actually happens to the excavator and uh, they have to dig him out and, and in this movie anyway he almost didn't make it because that's very dangerous, very heavy all that dirt. Spoil spoiler alert. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's critical to the plot, so I think that's okay. Yeah, and you, you kind of knew. Sorry, I didn't yeah. think about that, but also don't do that though. Yeah, true. And well, then, good safety tip. In the US they do have uh precautions against or rules against it too. Mm -hmm. the standards that right. you have to follow. Yeah, so if you do start after doing that, you typically you have to start stepping out uh, mm -hmm. further away from the unit you're digging in. So you dig half, you know, a meter down around it and then work your way out. Yeah. That's a common strategy anyway. Yeah. Also, I like how this game, you know, she's really not concerned about this building at all. It's just like, where's this, the stuff? Yeah. Who cares about this building? Right. Yeah, I was wondering if you had to dig out the whole building or if you're just trying to find one of those doors or what's happening. <laughs> yeah, I, so my understanding in this game is that the goal is to basically just find artifacts and that, uh, here, let me bring up my notebook. So you have a notebook, there's these relics, and it says, sell relic. Oh, no. So, yeah, yeah, so apparently the the point of this game, other than just finding stuff, is you can... Apparently, there's towns that you can go to, and then you can either sell them to um, collectors or you can sell them to museums. And so that's another big, uh, I think, difference between what this character is doing and then real archaeology. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in real archaeology, it's very unethical to do that. 
And a big That's problem, actually. Straight right? up not archaeology. It's right. Yeah. Archaeology is about the stories the things tell us, not about the thing itself and how much it can get you. Yeah, and regarding the point that you just made, Mike, about it being a huge problem is it, it definitely is. There's huge, um, not even just your kind of casual collector um, and relic hunter, but you also have huge black markets out there for artifacts from places like Egypt and Central America and um, all over the Middle East. Um, uh, a few yeah. years ago, actually, Hobby Lobby got themselves into big trouble because they bought mm -hmm. um, artifacts that were almost, I guess they they've ultimately decided they probably came from the Taliban. And so buying them mm -hmm. helped to fund terrorist activities. And so, yeah, it's yeah. E even locally, it often is involved with uh, mm -hmm. uh, drugs and that kind of thing too. So yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah. And I know even like uh, on, on Facebook or not, I'm sorry, on YouTube, I mean, I've, if you go on there and look at metal detecting, there's there's so many videos out there of people going and doing this sort of thing, and it's uh, yeah, but don't look it good. up. Don't look it up. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't give, give them, them views. <laughs> don't give them views. Don't <laughs> even give them a thumbs down. No, don't, just don't don't do it. But yeah, it is. So it's a big problem everywhere, not just you know internationally. As an undergrad, I one of the books that was assigned in my intro to archaeology class was actually really eye opening about the the black market aspect of it. And I can't remember what it's called right now, but I can step into the other room and grab it really quickly. But it it was a really really great book and very easy to read. It was um, I believe it was a journalist actually that went undercover in some of these um, situations. Um, I'm going to mm. go grab it really quickly while you sure. continue. Yeah, dig yeah. I like I like how we're talking about the ethics of archaeology, and I'm continuing to just dig this out without, without recording it, anything. But I mean, I think that does bring up a, a you know a good point that this game is you know billing itself as as archaeology, and uh, you know it certainly isn't archaeology by modern standards. But maybe you know in terms of what archaeology looked like during the kind of colonial time period, um, it might represent that to some degree. And, you know, all the kind of problems there are that go along with that sort of activity that often happened during, you know, times of conflict and, and war. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of those early expeditions to Egypt by the British and then later on the French under Napoleon. This is the sort of thing that they would do after they conquer these um, these areas uh, or or, you know, colonize these areas as they dig up artifacts and they'd send them back to England or France, and a lot of those are still on display inside museums like the Louvre or the British Museum. And there's, you know, more recently, there's been a more of a push or, or awareness of, you know, kind of the the ethics of that. Of, you know, of course, that's not ethical, but even this idea of should they should they continue to have these on display or in their collections, or should they? should they, you know, repatriate them or return them to where they uh, came from? And that's, that's a, that's a big question in the museum field right now. Um, that has definitely been a conversation for a long time, but I think is becoming more and more mainstream. And it, it's worth pointing out too, that we're, you know, we're kind of picking on this game because it's what we're looking at right now, but really hardly any game or movie or TV show gets this right. Um, these, right. these things we're talking about is a very common idea of what archaeology is. So, you know, uh, we're just we're talking about this game because we're playing it, but you can find these issues practically anywhere. That's true. I am back. I couldn't find the book, although Rachel says she might have it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, why don't you look it up for us? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's if I find the title, I'll be sure to to say it. Um, so there's a question um, about the game, which I, we I don't know if we can answer, but we can talk about briefly. Um, if we do poor practices, uh, are we penalized in any way? Uh, what is uh, poor? What is what is meant by poor? Pr I mean, we got bit by a snake, so I guess we can <laughs> we could die. Like, uh, don't mess with nature. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can really get penalized other than if you, you know, if you die. Essentially, I don't think there's 
Yeah, I don't think there's a penalty for selling the artifacts to black market or something like no, that. No, yeah, no, no. You you so when you bring up this, uh, you'll see that you actually make money. I haven't I haven't found a town yet. I just I played this briefly um before. This is like this is literally the longest I've played this game so far. So I haven't gotten really too far into it, but my understanding is that when you sell them, you basically just get money. And I'm not sure what you can do with the money other than buy food or maybe something else. But I guess one of the options is you can give them to a museum. And it says you can see them on display, but I haven't tried that yet. But I don't think there's any, I think it's more of a, that's kind of the point is to sell them to make money. So there's not like a penalty. Hmm. You know, that would be, that would be an interesting aspect though. If, you know, you had to, we're out here at night because we don't want to get arrested by the police or something, which is what uh, I would imagine a looter would probably do is try to I get out to there, there, yeah. Yeah, at nighttime. Um, and then I know, you know, of course, that's whatever you want to call them, looter or, or collectors. I mean, there's definitely quite a few uh, amateur, what you might call amateur archaeologists or, you know, people interested in it that go out and try to do this sort of thing. Um, like what, you know, with metal detecting and Janine, I know you've, you've actually worked with, uh, like metal detectors on project. Can you talk a little bit about your experiences with, you know, when our archeologists and, um, amateurs are able to kind of work together on projects? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Tristan was with me for a lot of this project too. So please, um, Tristan, if I'm missing any, anything, uh, feel free to jump in. But, uh, my thesis site was on a, a civil war battlefield down in Florida, and um, the the primary um, field workers for the project were volunteers who had metal detector experience. Um, and some of them uh, definitely did it on their own time as well. Um, and I think that project was pretty beneficial for a lot of them in showing what kinds of information you can get out of doing it correctly and marking locations and and kind of the benefit of doing this in a systematic scientific approach um, whereas there were others that we worked with who didn't necessarily see it that way um, I've seen them at events since then and they are still talking about these artifacts that they're collecting and selling or um, whatnot uh, we did actually have an artifact go missing on the project. Oh, um, bummer. Mm. Was, yeah, that was pretty disappointing. Um, but it, it did also change how we ran the project. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting experience. But most of them that we that I worked with personally were really, really great. Um, and they, as we explained, um, the types of information we could get out of doing it in a systematic fashion they were very understanding and they were very excited to see the project and, and how it continued to work but there there are others that we just couldn't get through to um and i've also worked with Mont metal detectorists at montpelier and it's a pretty similar thing uh, there's there's people who work on their own projects but they've got um gps devices on their phone where they photograph and mark the artifacts and then you have others that are just digging um to to find the cool pretty artifacts um so yeah it's it's a lot different <laughs> right yeah and what I, I know like in other capacities you've worked with volunteers too uh, do you guys do any of that at jamestown in terms of like at the lab with volunteers i know with covid right now it may be a little different but do you guys have anything like that um yeah actually we have volunteers in multiple locations at Jamestown, including the lab. Um, they don't have as many volunteers help in the field, although occasionally they do ask them out for projects. But um, in the lab, we have, um, oh goodness, I should have looked up a number. <laughs> um, probably are 20, 20 or 30 volunteers that come in every week. Wow. Uh, and they have set times. Uh, we haven't had them in almost a year though. Wow. Um, yeah volunteers was in mid-march uh because of covid but yeah they they come in they help us wash and sort artifacts and work on special projects um regarding either building the reference collection or rehousing different materials 
Um, so yeah, they're, they're, or they do a lot of artifact labeling for us, which is really nice. <laughs> um, but yes, we, we have a lot of really, really great volunteers there. And um, that's part of my job is, is to oversee and work with the volunteers. I was going to say, I have a feeling that uh, any artifacts that our character finds, you probably not label mm. properly. No, no, definitely not. I, they probably won't even go into a bag. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's like it's in the satchel in her backpack. That's where yeah. it's at right now. Although I don't know, sell relic. Sorry, you can only. Sh okay, these are ones that are we already have apparently in right. our satchel, and we're out of water, so that's probably not good. Twenty percent water, ninety percent food. Our health's pretty good. Maybe we yeah. should find some water. I'm not really sure where. Find some water. I'll walk around. Coconuts, yes. Maybe. Let's find a palm tree. Yeah, the coconut coconuts. said it was pick some up. Early, but you might be able to to crack it open. Okay. Yeah, let me try that. What is that? I don't know. Let's check it out. Just, That's not, I don't know. <laughs> not, <laughs> nothing. Oh, maybe it's just some grass. Some weeds. Okay, here's some coconuts. Uh, yeah, we found oh it's food, food. though. Yeah, that's kind of silly. It should be like at least some water in it. Oh yes, Barbara, that's it. It's dealing history. Um, I don't oh, know okay. that, but that's the name of the book. Um, if I can get it back from Rachel or F Pan or wherever, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll look for it and see if we, if we might have it. Okay. okay so, so so far we have found. Is this a snake? No, it's just like a stick. So far, we have not found that's anything. pretty realistic, actually. <laughs> yeah. once, you, once you've seen a snake, then like every stick looks like a snake. Uh huh. Oh, what's this? Is this our camp? I think I found our camp. Hey. Yes. Okay. Let's let's go to bed, since it only takes like a minute. What what's going on here? Time will. I think time is moving quickly Press while you're in. To sleep your or okay. Yeah. We'll wake up. You can only sleep at night. I, I got bit again. I got bitten again. <laughs> <laughs> Always check your sleeping bag. I guess it, I guess it doesn't really change the... I, get away from me. <laughs> I bet that other lunar came in and put uh, the scorpion in our tent. Yeah, yeah. It just the scorpion hates us. It really hates us. I've never seen them chase people up. that much. Yeah. Well, if, if we don't find water soon, I'm pretty sure this game's going to end. <laughs> you haven't actually hasn't gone down for quite some time. The yeah. water. Mm -hmm. Press and hold E maybe. Okay, let me try that. Oh, I got bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's doing because you, your health is back up to seventy five now. So you did sleep, but the time hasn't changed at all. But I keep getting bit. We, you... <laughs> we have a point in the chat that yeah. you know at least it's biting us and not stinging us. That's true. true. <laughs> I'm gonna get yeah. my car. <laughs> okay, there we go. Sleep in the uh -oh. car, actually. What's going on? Okay, that didn't looks work. like the driving. Yeah, that scorpion seriously coming after him. Let's see if we can maybe we can ride a camel. That'd be kind of useful. You no? and riding animals. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days we're gonna be able to monitor on horseback. That is my that's my goal for twenty twenty one. I, I haven't ridden a horse in like 20 years. Yeah. But I mean, how hard how hard can it be? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you get, right. You get on and it goes, right? It goes like where you want it to all the time. All the time. Oh, uh, Sam's asking if we can hit the scorpion with the torch. I don't, can we move the torch at all unless we're digging? No, I, I can try any. to dig. Maybe, you know what I can do is I'll dig a big hole in the ground <laughs> and then I'll have the scorpion chase me. And then I'll have it fall in the hole like a trap. A scorpion pit. A scorpion pit. And it will be like a booby trap. You should dig it near the uh, <laughs> the rival like archaeologist's camp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it. Man, it's very difficult to... Uh, what's that in the... Oh, look. That's you see that camp. in the distance? That's my camp? I don't yes. think so. Are you sure? Yep. I thought I walked the other direction. You've kind of been going in circles. I, th <laughs> I, I think you're wrong, Tristan. I okay. think this is the other camp. Oh, oh wait, look, there's two camels right. and there's a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a little turn around here. Yeah, so I guess the scorpion is it's finding, following you uh, again. Oh, great. Let's see if I can dig a hole. Too rocky. 
have have either of you had an experience where it was just too rocky to oh, today? Gosh. I know Tristan, you've been out west. Yeah. I I have not. Uh yeah. there's some soils that are so compact you dig with a pickaxe pretty much. Oh wow. And you do it you do it in like skimming like you would with a shovel as best you can, but you're not getting through it with a shovel. Um yeah. And then some of it's just like basically cobbled street. <laughs> That's miserable too. Yeah. The scorpion, leave me alone. Man, I really wish I hadn't lost our horse. No. <laughs> All right, so I had a question about the scorpion chasing. Uh so there's there's one situation we were digging out in Colorado where we found we for whatever reason we were pulling up a bunch of scorpions and they weren't really harmful, but I remember one one case in particular, we like we'd be digging and we just had to see a scorpion go crawling across the the excavated unit or something. Uh, so I scooped one up in a dustpan. I was going to toss it off site. And I had a friend say, wait, wait. And he hold up a pen in front of it to get it to strike. And that sucker ran right past the pen and went straight for his hand. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> and he jumped back about three feet, and he was not going to try that again. <laughs> and Always beware of scorpions. Okay. You're not what, I guess. Yeah, basically. Healthy would respect you, would for you, them. Don't mess with them. Would you prefer to uh, have to deal with a scorpion or a snake? That's the bigger question. Are either one poisonous? Let's say both of them are poisonous. <laughs> Equally poisonous. Neither. <laughs> What's well, kind of <laughs> <laughs> And we have another you... correction. Venomous. <laughs> yes, Venomous, that's fair. Yes. Well, it's poisonous if you eat it, right? Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be eating any um, any of them. Um, oh, I don't know. Probably is they're both so fast. Uh, probably a scorpion. I'm not sure. Yeah. I've never dealt with scorpions before. That's the only reason I say that. They're probably <laughs> even worse. <laughs> I mean, they mostly just want you to leave them alone, like a snake does. Yeah. I don't think they stand their ground. Like they're they're more stompable. Whereas That's if you what try I'm that on a right. snake, yeah. then you're more likely to get bit, which is... Yeah. So I suppose there's that. Yeah, I figure you can just throw your boot at it if it's a scorpion. It's kind of hard think, to do it with a snake. I think your sight got filled in while you were sleeping. It, it did, yeah, which is, uh, you know, should give great. you some tarps so you can cover it. Now, ar do all archaeologists <laughs> do jump like that, I want to know. <laughs> like that, that yeah, high? Just like that. Especially with torches in their hands. Yeah, in <laughs> fully stiff body, yes. It's yeah. called multitasking. It's actually really important. <laughs> do you learn this in grad school? Like, when, at what point in grad school do you learn how to dig with the the torch in the hand and, and one handed shovel? When do they, when do they teach that? You know, I think it was a shortcoming of my education. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. You guys didn't obviously clearly didn't go to the right. Uh, I've actually never training. used a torch before. I feel like I should put a disclaimer out there and say I'm not an Egyptologist. Yeah, there's so. that too. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is how they do things over there. Maybe. Well, she's definitely proficient. Well, I think this <laughs> site is misleading because I'm not finding any artifacts well, it, by this structure. Can you go inside of it? Did you uh, dig up a like door? dig inside? Well, there's a door. It there's signs yeah. of doors, but you haven't had yeah. them fully excavated, I wondered. No, maybe maybe that's the problem. I, maybe I'm not digging down far enough. Let's keep digging. <laughs> the mechanics on this is pretty interesting. Yeah. The, it gets a little janky, but it's it's shaping the surface. I mean, it's no Minecraft, that's yeah. for sure. There's no shovel skimming, but, you know, I got to give them a little props on that programming-wise. What? What is shovel skimming? Shovel skimming is what we do most of the time when we're excavating, where we take off about a centimeter at a time with a shovel and work our way down that way. She just likes to do a meter at a time? Yeah. Horizontally or vertically, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 The idea when we do it is that if you find an artifact, first of all, you're going slower, so you're less likely to break it, but also you're more likely to find it in place that way. And that's valuable information. Yeah, I think in the notebook it said something about being careful with, although I don't know if it really matters on this game, whether, you know, if, if you dig too fast, you break it. 
Town small. Maybe there's some clues in this notebook. What do you think? Should we stick at this side or should we try to find one of these other ones? I'll try something different. Okay. So I think we're the X, I assume. Yes. Areas of interest I have circled. X is my location. I'm not sure if this means current location or where we started at. I think that's your camp. I okay. think the little circle to the left might be, well, I suppose I don't know, you know what the cardinal directions really. I was going to say, you know what would be super useful? Compass. Cardinal directions and a compass. Because now I literally, I don't know. Which way, you guys, which well, way you, you want to go? Your GPS type map, right? Do I? Yeah. I can't see it. Look, it's dark. I can't see it either. And there's no cardinal directions there either. So there's no cardinal directions. Uh, it's kind of hard to drive the Jeep when it's this dark out. Or at all. But I, or uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> even when it's not dark out, it's the mechanics of driving the, the Jeep are kind of difficult. But we can try it again. I just don't want to get by that, bit by that scorpion. She should need to take her boot off and squish it. Um, not someone that said that we wanted to map features, which is definitely true. I, unfortunately, yeah. I think the game uh, game there we go. does not acknowledge how important those are. Here we go. Yeah. I'll map this rock right here for you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rock. I don't think that's quite what they mean. Yeah. No. <laughs> there we go. Oh, look, oh. a lady. Uh oh. What? Uh oh. What is going on with your camera? I don't know. Hi, excuse me. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> How are you? Just wandering around the desert. Just moonwalking in place. She's, she's like, hey, what are you doing out here so late at night with a Come shovel on, and a torch? Digger. Don't nothing. 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 <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing out here, What lady. are you doing out here without a torch? <laughs> uh, no, she told uh, you not to bother her. <laughs> oh, she did? Yeah. Okay, let me try again. Hi. Sorry, Peter. please don't bother. <laughs> let's, follow, let's follow her. Maybe she knows where the town's at. Yeah, she's. I think she's stuck. Say, uh, excuse me, ma'am, do you know where any water is? So I'm almost <laughs> out. Can't find any water around here. All right, well, maybe she was in my camp. Okay, there's a, there's a light, I think. Let's go over back in this direction. Yeah. Yeah, I would maybe... really like it to be daytime again. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't I'm not really sure how to do that. It doesn't seem to work when I go in the tent. It doesn't seem really Or you just anything. get attacked by a scorpion every time. Yeah. It just it knows that I want to come back to my tent, so it just mm -hmm. keeps attacking. It's just waiting for you. All right. Well, it does have a wheelbarrow. Yeah, I tried to use it. It doesn't look like you can. Okay. E. Okay. I'll just what if I wait? I'm just waiting. Yeah. Oh, we got oh there, there we go. go. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's just, just wait a little bit longer. More time. Moonwalking Man, we should, have, we should have done that 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> All we right. Have a second episode to do some we more. Should, we should. Well, you know, there, we can go to Central America, so maybe they do a better <laughs> job. Uh-oh. Oh, no. There's a storm. Uh-oh. We better. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, it's. Uh, oh. Don't hit camel the camel. road. I'm trying not to. There's a rock I marked. Yep. I guess this is a road, sort of, that's blocked. I don't know. Let's just go this way. <laughs> this is the F, F Pan vehicle. We actually got a Jeep now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's like the company that makes it is Jeep. Mm. It's not like an actual, like an off roading Jeep, which would kind of be cool. I think we should get horses. Still. Looks, like, looks like the lady we saw is not there anymore. She didn't make it. Chat seems <laughs> to have decided that she was a looter. Yeah. Probably. She probably was. Definitely possible. Well, this is actually a pretty decent field vehicle. Oh, look. Another vehicle. Look. Right. Let's check this out. Let's dig around it. Is that fort and water? Wait, what Whoa. did it say? What fort? Do you guys see fort? In the distance? Where? Okay. Where? We'll look on the horizon more. Oh, I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Over this? There? That doesn't look like it. Oh, maybe yeah, that's something. Maybe behind that. Looks like yeah, there might be a okay. structure there over there. Well, let's excavate this this van. Maybe we'll find right. some tourists. Maybe we can't. Oh, no, we can. Okay, cool. See if you find anything in there. Well, you know, it could be archaeological, just not ancient Egyptian. 
Right. It's Historical archaeology matters too. <laughs> Especially old vans in the desert. Yeah. Actually, old. vans, our vehicles are often not, don't have too much consideration just because they tend to move around so much. So if we find a vehicle, often we're not too fussed about it. But it probably yeah. depends the context a bit. Wow, I think this is... Centura, we have no idea the time frame. You have a Jeep? Yeah. And I'm... that's, I think, our only clue as to the time frame. You know... I think yeah. he's asking the historically significant time frame. Oh, I thought um, when the game was supposed to be taking place. Um, well, I, I don't know. That's how I read it. But so... I guess it's it's different depending on where you are. Here in the U.S., the um, the magic number is fifty years, um, and and that I mean some things are considered to be more significant uh, than other things. But oh no, you have found another yeah. snake. But yeah, so, it's all right. There's generally Look, some things fork. can be significant immediately. But yeah. that's usually extreme things like, yeah, I don't know, the moon landing. Oh, there's a person up there. Yeah, there are. Maybe it's a maybe it's, it's an guy. archaeologist. <laughs> maybe it's your black market dealer. Maybe. Maybe you walk through the perfect. building. I'm gonna see if I can go in this door. I'm not sure if I can. You'd probably jump on top of the building. Oh, you can. Hey. Cool. All right. I didn't think I was gonna be able to do that. that. Also, I was gonna say that um, in survival games. Abandoned vehicles are very important, generally. Yeah. You can find stuff. Yeah. Wow, this is... Oh, that camera. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, rough. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm really trying here. I know, I know. At least you can <laughs> jump. Like yeah. Super Mario Brothers. Um, I feel like we should tell the audience that this game was $3. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. that is important. <laughs> yeah, it was very reasonably priced. That's, I'll give it that. <laughs> Although I kind of feel like, you know, they should have given us a free version, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there is one. So, yeah, I mean, considering the price, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, there's a scorpion. You got to be Run. kidding me. Get away. <laughs> it's the same one. Yeah. It's following okay. you. What are these? What are these oh, things? There's a ramp in the back, Mike. Go up the ramp. There's chickens. Oh, we can eat them. The scorpion's right behind you. You're being followed by oh, the scorpion. Man. Hey, I'm going to make a scorpion <laughs> hole. I hear the Jaws theme as it comes up on scorpion your hole. Here we go. I'm just going to dig really deep. It's just coming over the hole. Like Here we go. Like Come on. Actually, would. Okay, I'm just going to run. <laughs> you you said there was, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's way better gonna... than going inside of a building. Hey, look, this is another technique. It's called dig while you walk. Yeah. <laughs> the the snowplow excavation technique. <laughs> yeah. You guys ever try that? Uh, no, I haven't. Just try it. Just either. try it. It's pretty, you know, pretty new technique. <laughs> I invented it. Yes. What this guy's doing. Halt! What are you doing here? I don't know. What are you doing here? Oh, sorry about that. I'm just exploring. Okay. Okay. What? You are not supposed to be up here. I'm not supposed to be digging up artifacts in the middle of the desert either. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking for the black market. <laughs> it's, arrest her, sir. Now get down. <laughs> right. well, you have four lives. Sorry. Okay. What happens if I start digging? Oh, you know what? There's a donkey. I want to try to oh, dig Yeah. That. Okay, let's see if we can get on the donkey. Since Tristan loves to ride animals. Yes, that is always me that wants to ride the animals. <laughs> He's always complaining that we don't ever get the right animals in video games so let's give him what he wants didn't it say something about water over in this area that is a small oh, dog are those goats oh no that's those a goat goats. <laughs> here i'll make a goat hole you should still be able to ride them <laughs> okay well that was a bust yeah well also i've noticed that our water has not dropped below 20 percent, so i yeah. think we're probably fine Plus, there's water oh, right there, there. There's water. Okay. Let's go check it out. It's with that Good thing she had left. This? Yeah. It's an oasis. Is it trying to... Well, the, the line of sand in the middle there. Oh, I don't know. Oh, might yeah. just be a... Should I... Ah, I think. Should I... Oh, wait. 
should we take what, what should we do should we look oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dangerous so talking about Why archaeology so in dangerous? florida um <laughs> yeah no crocodiles actually how about alligator yes since you yes. like that accuracy no crocodile should we see should we see if she can get eaten maybe no hey, no you should try and ride the, the <laughs> crocodile it's like, what is that movie? Crocodile Dundee, right? When yeah. the like, character leans down to get some water in her canteen. And, yeah, that's and right. And crocodile gets her. All right. We've got some water. Okay, we're good. Maybe one more. All right. Let's get out of here. Very dangerous. Yeah. Yes. Well, at least we found this fort. Um, should we get back in our Jeep and explore a little bit more? Let's see if we can find another site. Okay. Actually, that place behind the Jeep looks like it could be something. Place behind the Jeep. This place yeah. might we basically drove over, over it. Yeah. This right here? It's kind of got a ridge all the way around it. All right, let's just drive right in the site. Yep. Oh, make nice... <laughs> just hit everything on the way. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not worried about your driving. It's the cameras. It gets me. Oh, yeah. I can't really do a whole lot about that. I know. This looks like some, a bunch of just rocks to me, but let's go ahead and mark these rocks off. Since <laughs> the one thing this game has done well, though, at least, is uh, it hasn't had us look for um, fossils. That's true. I'll give them props on that. That's true. But let's mark this sign off, just so we know. I'm gonna go for a different pattern here. Banana. <laughs> yeah. Ban <laughs> <laughs> How did you do? I was going for uh, like a moon, but yeah. banana actually. Said that. That's better. Yeah, banana. We can actually. What else you guys? Maybe we can write out F pan. Why don't you <laughs> dig in the side a little bit and see if there's actually anything in there? Okay, I'll do the. Let's try uh, this technique first. The F pan sun technique. <laughs> like a swirl. Don't I think give this us is credit much for that, please. I think this is just a bunch of rocks. Yeah, it looks like it might be. Also, apparently it doesn't matter where I stand. I just yeah. have to press the, the cursor. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Um, I definitely don't have that kind of reach when I dig. It's actually like a super uh, hero power. Yeah. <laughs> just point at something and it just, you know. Yeah. Comes up. I'm not sure. Yeah, these just look like a bunch of... Oh, see the rocks? Do kind of fall. Look at that. They do. At least the smaller ones. Yeah. Let's look on the map again and see. See, so yeah, it looks... Or, so, I wish you, we could tell, like, where... Maybe we're, like, over here now? We can't see your cursor. Oh, you can't? No. Oh. Well. <laughs> so I don't know what you're pointing at. We're in one of the circles, I think. But looking at that map, that shape... In real life, it'd be there's a site there. I have yeah. no idea if that's what they're going for here. Yeah, oh, but that that was not a natural shape. Okay, let's. There's also a ramp this, down in there. Yeah, this does looks like a ramp. You're yeah. right. Yeah, let's dig it up. <laughs> you might need it to get out. <laughs> He'll be fine. Don't worry, we have a jeep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not sure this isn't like an actual ramp. Oh, is that the abandoned camp that we saw before? I think it is. It looks like, yeah. Why don't you go down a bit more? Oh, you just want me to keep digging? Okay. I mean, All that's right. kind of what they're, the game is wanting you to do, I think. I was trying to be ethical. <laughs> Ethics, just wants me to keep... <laughs> I don't want to violate any OSHA rules. Digging away. Yeah. I think the key is finding out where those sites are within the circle mm. and then yeah around there Maybe randomly. Places. So far nothing though. I got a banana and some coconuts and mm. a bunch of scorpion bites. <laughs> is that a, is, <laughs> a that very... a is that a looter pit? I that, see in the distance. That, these are all looter pits. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you? See? Oh, over here. Yeah, there's those depressions. Oh yeah, maybe. Okay, let's see if they were right. Or maybe you made them at some point. No, I didn't make those. 
No, his would be in a long line. You only <laughs> dig. <laughs> yeah, they're they're just like walking ones. That's the technique <laughs> I use. Just walk, walk and dig. Well, we've met uh, a lady who may or may not have been a looter. We've met a very rude soldier guy who didn't want us standing in the fort. He was guarding an empty fort. He definitely wasn't a park ranger because he would have told us more information about it. <laughs> if, he, if he did. Oh, man. Well, what do you guys want to do? You want to look more? Oh, wait. We've got about five minutes, just so you're aware. Five minutes. Okay. I think I think oh, there I might see. be something. Oh, yeah, there's a building back see there. What I'm saying? And there's this circle here. That could be oh. natural. This is definitely not natural over here. No, no. That was a foundation at least. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we found another structure. It's going to be interesting digging during a sandstorm. Yeah. Dig a hole, fills I'm right back in. I'm looking yeah. to see if it does. At least you won't have so to bail far. water out. Ah, uh, yeah. No fun. No fun. Any uh, water moccasins ever surprise you in a hole? Or snakes? Not that I've ever seen. No. no I've seen them on sites, but not close enough to worry about it. <laughs> we do get critters in the holes sometimes, though. Um, usually they get trapped and we, when we have them covered overnight and they crawl under because it's warm or cooler or whatever and, and we have to fish them out in the morning. I think there's Found been the a rattlesnake, the most alarming thing that uh, we found, but mostly it's things like, like mice or toads or something. Mm -hmm. Well, I seem, can't seem to get to this door. Maybe I can Looks like the door's broken, though. Because you're not digging very carefully. We know where I should dig is, like, Shut behind up. the house where they threw their garbage, right? Yeah. Well, we don't know the disposal patterns for this group of people. That's oh, that's true. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, we made it. Okay, so let's, what's your hypothesis? Mine is that it's behind the back door, wherever that's at. Let's try over here. We're coming up empty-handed. That they're not going to think about that in this game, and it's going to be inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Try out again, though. Well, we're getting close on our time. Uh, so what what are your opinions about this game? We'll start with Janine. What, what do you think? I mean, based on, of course, we, we haven't played it very much. But just based on what we've done so far, what are your what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I'd definitely like to see if if we can play one more time and see um, see some actual what it considers sites and, and do some of the other things in the game. That would be interesting. But based on this session, um, I like the notebook a lot. I think that's a really good touch. Um, uh, the digging mechanics are certainly interesting. <laughs> um, but... Some of them are, are kind of detailed. Sand does fill back in overnight uh, if you leave it open. Um, but yeah, it definitely has some issues with ethics <laughs> um, and practices as well. How about you, Tristan? Do you uh, agree? Ten out of ten would watch Mike get bit by a scorpion again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Janine summed it up pretty well. Um, the the journal is really pretty the standout thing actually that was that was pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. Someone yeah, put work into that. Definitely, yeah. I think the biggest thing for me though is the selling of the artifacts. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the this game, really. Right. Right. Which is problematic. Even selling to museums is problematic. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, look, it's, it does say here. It says plan to speak to museum staff or curators regarding contacts in overseas countries like Egypt to allow me to dig and work there. There must be paths to take this and make this a safe thing to do. That's called going to a college uh, <laughs> and getting a degree, getting a degree in uh, anthropology, archaeology. A lot of different universities have wonderful programs uh, like University of West Florida. There are a bunch of others, but that's the only one I'm going to mention. But uh, yeah, so... Well, I mean, it did say under that 
uh, it did ask if she would need permission to dig anywhere. And that's something that uh, it does, that doesn't necessarily come in, up in either games or with collectors necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Unless you played the Nancy Drew Secret of the Scarlet Hand game. It's very, they make it very clear. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> that's probably yeah. the most ethical representation of archaeology I've seen. Yeah, so so far, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, I want to thank uh, both, of course, Tristan and Janine, especially, for taking the time out to come and play this game, Archaeology X, with us. I think the consensus is it's, uh, you know, the ethical message isn't great, but there's some somewhat, you know, accurate things into this game. Um, we've actually got several different Archaeology Arcade episodes planned for the rest of this month. Uh, next week, we're going to be playing... The Return of Oberdin, is that right, Tristan? Yep. Is that the name of the game? With uh, underwater archaeologist Nicole Grenin. And then the week after that, we've got another one planned. We'll, we'll be playing the game Sea of Thieves once again. But this time, we're, we're going to have uh, underwater archaeologists from the Bureau of Archaeological Research, Melissa Price. And to kind of uh, end out the month, the last week of February, we're going to be playing uh, through a virtual landscape that was created uh, several years ago of, of some maroon communities. We're going to have a couple guests on to talk about that who are involved with creating those virtual landscapes. So um, as always, if you want to learn more information about the Florida Public Archaeology Network, you can go ahead and go to our website, which is www.fpan.us. I'll put a link to that website in the description of the YouTube video once we put it up there. Also, please check out uh, Historic jamestown.org that's their website uh jamestown is an incredible site if you've never been there you should go when they're when they're open again but also check out all the great online stuff that they have they've got a great youtube channel they've got plenty of lesson plans and information for all the things that uh they do and that includes things that janine's been up to as well um and then if you haven't already liked or subscribed any of our videos on our youtube channel uh, that would be great if you could do that. But if not, no worries, no hard feelings. Um, yeah, no worries. And then, like I said, we'll see uh, we'll see you all next time once we come back on next week. And if you want to learn when that is, just check out our uh, YouTube channel. Facebook? And Facebook page. Facebook, yeah, Facebook page. That's probably yeah. the best way to do that. All right. Yeah. Thanks, all. Thank